Crafting a fair and balanced difficulty curve in video games is one of the most challenging aspects that every developer will face getting their game to market. If you make the title too hard, then you risk completely alienating certain portions of the player base as they fail and fail again to progress past certain points. And on the other hand, if you make your game too easy, then you could end up just failing to hold any interest at all. People want a challenge, but they want it to be a fair one. And it's here where the difficulty curve comes in. How do you at once teach? and push the player without it leading to a skill-capped brick wall. Well, the ways around this are numerous and it would actually benefit their own article, but what we're interested in today are titles that seem to get it right but then drop the ball hard before hoofing said ball right into our faces for good measure. These are moments that turned experiences from being a casual but uphill climb into a scene more reminiscent of trying to climb Everest with your bloody teeth. So brace yourselves as we're about to encounter some absolutely brutal difficulty spikes. As I'm Jules, this is what Culture.com, and these are 10 unexpected video game difficulty spikes that brutalize players. Number 10. Magical Nitro Delivery – Castlevania 64 so Castlevania 64 is, to put it bluntly, an absolute embarrassment to the Castlevania series. Now, what should have been the franchise's first foothold onto Ninty's new console ended up being a rather slip down the ladder thanks to its shoddy controls and utterly abysmal camera. Plus, it had one of the most painful difficulty spikes ever in the form of the Magical Nitro section. Just saying that aloud will cause many veterans of this title to shudder, as they all know that carrying one of these restricts your movement so that you can't jump without the Nitro exploding and killing you in one hit. Brilliant. Now, normally the places to use the nitro are close by, but one challenge asks you to take the bomb from the top of the castle to the very bottom. That's an obscenely long time to not get hit, not fall, and obviously not jump, all of which are made so much harder by the game's erratic camera. Now, things technically actually get even worse in the next level when it comes to difficulty, but for its sheer annoyance, the magical nitro makes the list. Number 9. Bubble Trouble – The Legend of Zelda now, sometimes video game difficulty spikes come not just from a single enemy or level, but how multiple factors cross over. For example, let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda, which throughout most of its game has a brilliant learning curve, but becomes an utter hellscape for the unprepared in level 6, aka the Dragon Dungeon. Here you'll come across three enemies which will immediately stand out as troublesome, whiz robes, like likes, and bubbles. Now, like likes have a horrible habit of stealing your shield, bubbles also love to disable your sword for a bit and whiz robes while well, they just love to spam magic at you like the little bastards they are. Now alone, they aren't too much of a challenge as the shield can indeed block spells, and the sword is only missing temporarily and the like likes obviously can't steal from you if you cut them to ribbons. However, in this dungeon, all three of them appear at the same time, which can result in you losing everything and then your life in mere moments. While not being the greatest challenge in the game that Link will have to overcome, it certainly acted as a roll the dice and just hope for the best kind of moment. And those, well, they absolutely suck. Number 8. Cabin Defense – Resident Evil 4 Resident Evil 4 might well be one of the best executed survival horror action titles going, and still routinely manages to make utter fools out of other games that attempt to ape its style. Its enemies are challenging and only get more terrifying as time goes on. The bosses are also utterly memorable that it's an absolute pleasure to battle them, and outside of unlocking the infinite rocket launcher, rarely does the game feel anything less than a true test of your placement and timing. Yet the cabin defense section of this game was a bit of a wake-up call to players, as here there was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and the enemies were so numerous it was easy to get overwhelmed. Now, While not as challenging as some of the bosses in this game, this section amped up the tension to ridiculous levels, forcing you to barricade windows and bar doors, kick down ladders, and just pray that you didn't get caught between mobs of enemies. It wasn't uncommon to hear tales of people simply drowning under the infected, but you know what, it actually was damn fun, so much so that you kind of wished that it was its own mercenaries level. Number 7. Turbo Tunnel – Battletoads 
Now, to be honest, I had to include this section on this list because it still haunts me to this day, and will do so even more now that there's a new Battletoads game coming out, which also looks to have utterly brutal speeder bike sections. Oh, goody. After two stages of light-hearted and over-the-top brawler action, Turbo Tunnel drops into your lap like a fistful of bees to a picnic, causing pain and confusing chaos in mere moments. It's well documented how this stage requires you to have almost precognitive powers in order to succeed, but what is less mentioned is the fact that things actually only get worse from this point on. The later levels amp up in difficulty so much that it's borderline cruel, and even has another speeder bike section that makes Turbo Tunnel look like it's a chilled afternoon tea by comparison. However, Turbo Tunnel will always be infamous just because of how sheer the difficulty spike was in relation to the first two levels. Number 6. The Tutorial – Driver so what does Dark Souls and Driver have in common? Well, very little, you might think, seeing as one is about a gothic horror slog against overwhelming odds and the other is an undercover cop title. However, both share common ground in the fact that their opening sections absolutely brutalized players. Very few tutorials can claim to be as hard as Driver's, and while the list of things that you need to do is clearly stated on a checklist, the time limit, cramped locations, and unfamiliarity with the controls is likely to lead to a fair few restarts. It's a especially cruel as well because sometimes the game won't register what is clearly a slalom because you didn't finish or start it in the exact and unmarked spot that was requested. What this resulted in was a game whose bar to entry was much higher than its late game content would ever reach. Number 5. Brock – Pokemon Yellow while many of you might immediately see the words difficulty spike and Pokemon in the same sentence and assume that I'd be retelling the story of how Whitney and her mill tank absolutely rolled over my entire team again and again and again, just let it go, Jules, there was actually a gym leader before this badass lass who turned our hopes and dreams into rubble. And shockingly, it was Brock, the doyen of Pewter City. I say shocking for two reasons, by the way, because the first is that anyone who played Pokemon Red or Blue likely crushed his rock-based squads seeing as two-thirds of the starter Pokémon had type advantage over them, making it a short and rather lackluster experience. But the second reason, though, is because when Pokémon Yellow rolled around and forced you to take Pikachu as your main squeeze, shocking these ground-based Pokémon did absolutely nothing to them. Suddenly, the first speed bump to progress that players experienced had turned into a full-size roadblock upon which they'd smash into at full speed. And if you'd assumed that you'd be able to cheat by using the sprinklers that Ash did in the animated series, well, you'd be dead right wrong. And your Pokemon, well, they'd just be dead. Number 4. Beaver Bother – Donkey Kong 64 Donkey Kong 64 is a bloody weird game. Not only is it a collectathon for the ages, but some of the stuff that you get up to in this title is utterly ridiculous. From the almighty final boss fight against King K. Rule to all of the characters switching mayhem that makes up even the tamest of levels, this game utterly delivers quality content in almost every area. Unless that is that you're attempting Beaver Bother, because this mini game can slip on a banana peel and die. On paper, it actually sounds really simple. Chase a load of beavers into a hole in the middle of the room. However, in practice, well, it's like the game decides that it actually hates you as the beavers seem to refuse to actually play ball and will actively avoid getting into the hole even with pixel-perfect chasing. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's a super strict time limit that will see you complete this with mere seconds to spare even if you did everything right. Needless to say, it's actually an option that many people just simply skip doing after being battered by beavers over and over. Number 3. Native Fortress – Crash Bandicoot as many of us found out the hard way thanks to the glorious Insane Trilogy remaster, the original Crash Bandicoot was a title that took no prisoners. While the series definitely softened as it went on and became a brilliant balance of challenge and fairness, the original game, well, it had spikes that you could impale yourself on when it came to difficulty, and Native Fortress was the first sign of things to come. The opening levels were simple run-and-jump affairs with little in the way of real threats, but here, woof. The traps alone would see veterans of platformers become to sweat, but coupled with enemies that could force you off the platforms made for a pretty shocking experience. And while I absolutely love to moan about the high road, side note, f the high road, and those devilish dark castle stages towards the end of the game, to hit players with such a roadblock this vicious so soon, well, it bordered on the cruel. Number 2. The North Pole – The Simpsons, Bart vs. The World 
It's quite ironic that The Simpsons both made and subsequently broke my childhood, as while the TV show would go from strength to strength when I was but a lad, the Bart vs. The World video game that I was gifted as as a birthday present absolutely made me hate the series. Also, I had Simpsons wallpaper that gave me nightmares as the eyes followed you around the room, but I digress. Bart vs. The World was a true horror show of a game that, while looking like butter wouldn't melt in its mouth on the surface, would take a creme brulee blowtorch to your genitals as soon as you began playing playing it, especially if you pick the North Pole level. This absolute atrocity tasked you with completing a series of jumps across small platforms over instant death pits and water hazards. And making matters worse was that, as this was the North Pole, ice coated every surface, meaning that you'd slide right off those platforms as soon as you landed on them. Fun, right? And to top it all off, there were even a few sections that had bubbles of air for you to bounce off which would burst if you waited too long, and they had the worst collision detection possible. Double fun. And number one, Takedown. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I think it goes without saying that Modern Warfare 2 is one of the best Call of Duty entries in the entire franchise. Its liquid smooth shooting and huge amount of replayability allowed the title to carve its face into the series' is, 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 very own Mount Rushmore. However, that's not to say that the game was all smiles and sunshine, as outside of the online modes which would and definitely could kick your ass over and over, the game's single player had a few moments of bewildering difficulty. Now, Luckily, the game used a pretty lenient checkpoint system, but Sections like the favela firefights in the mission takedown were like smashing your face against a brick wall over and over, which could quite literally happen as you dive into rooms only to be blindsided by mobs of enemies shooting you from the roof and from the side alleys. If this wasn't bad enough, even if you did find a moment of respite, it would definitely be short-lived, as that pattering and snarling that you're hearing right now isn't from Lassie trying to pitch in and help, but instead from dogs that could one-hit kill you if you didn't have your timing right. This spike came out of nowhere and left many players reeling for hours afterwards. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 unexpected difficulty spikes that brutalized players. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can go over to Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to talk about one thing. I spoke today about brutalizing difficulty spikes that came out of nowhere, and you know what? In our real life, we will unfortunately have to deal with times that are incredibly hard and unfair for no reason reason and we just didn't see them coming. But I just want to say it's going to be alright. Take a step back from a situation that's causing you stress if you are able, remember you can ask for help, and definitely always keep in mind this simple fact, you are never alone. Friends, family and professionals in the support industry, these people care about you and want you to do well, alright? Big love from me to you. Take care of yourself. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.